There's this term called CRUD. It comes from the software development realm. And it stands for, the C in CRUD stands for create, R stands for read, U stands for update, and D stands for delete. And it's directly related to the HTTP verbs that we can use to be able to manipulate data that we would like to manipulate. And there's also a function that's attached to each. So let me explain. So the term create in CRUD equates to post in HTTP, which actually means create a URI. You can think of a URI as an object. So basically what we're saying when we post something to HTTP is we, we are basically creating an object. When we say HTTP get, we say we're reading an object. When we say HTTP put, we're saying we're updating an object. And when we say HTTP delete, that means we're deleting an object. So that's what the term CRUD stands for. There are a lot more HTTP verbs than these four, but just to simplify things, I think these four are the most fundamental and crucial for you to understand before you get into more advanced level stuff. Now, some conceptual level understanding of HTTP verb and URI. So if you were to look into a packet that actually has HTTP verbs and URIs contained within it, when we zoom into it and we look at the headers of that packet, we're gonna see the layer three header, the layer four header, and then the rest of the information. Now, when we zoom into the HTTP side of the house, what we'll see is we have HTTP request header and then we have HTTP other headers. Now, typically the verb, HTTP verbs we just looked at are contained within the HTTP request header. Also the URI or the object is also contained within the HTTP request header. However, the API parameters like, you know, whatever we're trying to update or delete or any type of parameters that we pass through the API are contained and located within the HTTP other headers. Now, if you were to look at, for example, a request called HTTP get URI. So what does get mean in HTTP? So if you guys recall, the previous chart we were looking at, get means to read. So here I'm saying HTTP go ahead and read me an object. And what object is that? It's a URI2. Now, what does that mean? So I actually have a REST server, which in this case could very well be the STN controller. And it's got different URIs stored on it. So URI1 will have a resource and variables attached to that resource. URI2, resource variables. URI3, resource variables, so on and so forth. Now in this request, I'm very specifically asking for URI2, which in this instance could be, hey, I wanna go ahead and get a read on all the live interfaces on this router. And with this request, that's exactly what I'm gonna get back from the HTTP REST server, which in this case, like I said, could very well be the SDN controller. Now, kind of zooming into it a little bit more. Typically when we're using an API to manipulate things, either we're gonna be doing things through a GUI or we're gonna have some sort of a configuration management tool that allows us to create scripts and run scripts against the northbound API. So what is a URI? So here I'm gonna give you a more in-depth view of a URI. So if you look at a typical URI, it looks like a URL almost, like the URL you guys are familiar with, right? Re which is a uniform resource locator. When you go to a website um, and you, you go to a certain page, the complete address is called a URL. And in this case, in URI, 
it's very similar to a URL. We have a protocol, which in this case is HTTPS over port 443. We have a server URL. So in this case, it's NAJ DNAC. DNAC stands for DNA controller, which I talked about in my previous video. And then finally, the part in green is the resource path of where that resource is located. Now, the entire structure that I'm showing you here is called a URI structure. This entire thing is a URI. And to take it a step further, what we have here is once again, we got the protocol, we got the server URL, we got the resource path. But what we have in addition to that is a certain parameter. It could be a set of parameters too, or it could just be a one parameter that we are passing through the URI against the, the API in order for us to be able to either read something or write something. And our SDN controller is able to understand the request and get us the information we're looking for. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.